Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today's project is this one. It's a little milk carton in its own carrier that has hinged, a hinged handle. And I first made this, or the only time I've made this actually, was in 2014, almost seven years ago. And it was very popular then. Lots of people remade it and showed me their versions, but I never have. I've never remade this project, so I decided now is the time. And you can see I've got the In the Wild paper here, which is really lovely. Um, and I decided not to go with any stamping or die cutting. I just wanted to make it about the paper. And these, um, they make great favours. They're not very big. It's a shade over two inches. Well, it's not even that. It's two inches by two inches. Not taking up a lot of real estate on your table if it's going to be a table favour, but a nice little gift. So I'm going to show you how to make it from start to finish because, whoopsie, you only need one piece of cardstock for it, for the whole thing, but you need to get that handle cut first. So please don't worry about writing any measurements down. Um, click open the description bar, you'll find all my instructions there, but like I say, you need to cut the handle first. So. The handle, which I've lost, is 11 inches long by half an inch wide. So I'm going to cut my half inch. So that's 28 by one and a half centimetres. And obviously because I work in International A4, our cardstock is longer than 11 inches. So I'm just going to trim that tiny bit left, tiny bit off. That's my handle. Then the base here it's five by five inches so I'm going to cut that that's 11.8 by 11.8 centimeters so that's my base and then for the actual milk carton itself um, it's five and five eighths of an inch by seven and three quarters which in again in metric is 13 and a half by uh I've lost my measurements 19 and a half and obviously I've already trimmed down so these are the three pieces I need that's my leftover that's my leftover and that super tiny square that I chucked in the bin and now can't reach so you've got stuff left over but that's the reason why you need to cut that long piece first okay oh i need my trimmer out um my design series paper for the base it goes all the way around and it's one and a quarter inches wide sorry tall it's one and a quarter inches by eight and a half which in metric 20 by 3 centimetres and then this little piece here hopefully DSP for carton oh yes one and five eighths of an inch oh it's not quite wide enough is it uh, is it should be one and five eighths by one inch so I need to trim it down to one inch and then I need two pieces that are one and five eighths of an inch I'm looking for that and in metric they are four by three centimeters basically I've lost my five eighths of an inch there it is I've lost it again found it so it is properly minimal designer series paper as well okay so I've not used this sheet of paper for anything other than these two boxes because it's the same paper against a different cardstock and I've still got most of it left. Oh, love it. Right, okay. So which bit am I going to score first? I'm going to score the base. Oh, I'm losing everything. So you're going to score that at one and a half inches on all four sides that is at three and a half centimeters on all four sides okay the carton the milk carton itself scoring that at one and seven eighths of an inch three and three quarters five and five eighths and seven and a half 
inches, which in metric is four and a half, nine, thirteen and a half, and eighteen. And then on the short side, at one and seven eighths, three and three quarters, which is not written down. Metric. Why have I not written that down? It's going to be four and a half and nine. And then you turn it over and score it at five, which is going to be twelve and a half centimeters. So you're turning it over, not round. Okay. So burnishing all my score lines. Remember, this one goes the other way because we scored it the other way. Oh, I forgot to put in some little markings. Nearly forgot. Okay. So, what I want to do is I want to put a little score line in the middle, but obviously it's not two inches to this point. It's a hair under. So, I'm just going to move my cardstock up a teeny tiny little bit. So that I can score straight down there. I'm going to do the same here. What I'm getting is this: these two score lines equal parts between the four and the six, so I can go straight down at five. And if you're working in metric, basically it's much simpler in metric. Score at two and a quarter and at mm, 16 and a quarter. Two and a quarter and 16 and a quarter, something like that. I'll make sure it's all written down in the blog. And that is so that I can find my steel ruler, which is not on my deck. Where's that gone? Oh, it's here. <laughs> That's so that I can come in from here and put these lines in. And that's going to create this part in here. Okay, so let's finish off burnishing. And that's a teeny tiny little bit there. Okay, so get my scissors out. Oh, biggest scissors in the world. That's a better pair. And cut straight down the rectangle, wedge into the square, and hack a bit off. That's so scientific, isn't it? Hack a bit off. That's so very me. And just keep rotating around. That's my box base, all done. And then this one here, where you've got that little skinny thin bit there, mitre a tiny bit off at the top and then cut the bottom one away and then just cut straight on the rest. And that's all been separated. Now, I've got these two little pieces of designer series paper. They're going to sit on these flat panels at the top. I don't know if there's a right or wrong way around. I'm gonna take that one because it's got more of the Merry Merlot. Oh, I don't know if I said it. that was the color I've got going on on here. Merry Merlot. This one was Cajun Craze. And then I'm going to get my tear and tape. Because this is such a tiny little panel, tear and tape means I can go over the edges and fold it back on itself. And it's going to stick to itself and not stick over. Oops. Press a bit more firmly. So that's the back. We know that's the back because it's got a panel on it and those are the sides. So fold in your two sides and the back and get some adhesive on there. And 
and then obviously I've put these score lines in already so it's just going to fold in on itself just like that right mega hole punch because I'm going through four pieces of card and I've got my ribbon assuming the kitten hasn't stolen it she keeps stealing my ribbons off my desk Berry and Sorrel, at least they don't actually remove the ribbon. They play with it, but they don't actually take it, but Fauna does. She thinks I've given her this wondrous gift of all this beautiful ribbon for her to actually remove from my desk. And it's there for her pleasure and entertainment. It's so not. Okay, I'm just putting that clip in place just to hold this shot. Oh, it's just banged off. <laughs> tummy extension. <laughs> you don't want to see me pushing this against my tummy. Does anybody else do that? Tie things down and use, you know, a leg or an elbow or a belly <laughs> to be the third hand or is that just me? Could well just be me. But I do find that our biggest block, which is an F block, <laughs> great, great tummy extender. Okay, let's trim off the ends of this ribbon that we don't need and bend that round so it's a little prettier. And then put this together. So I'm gonna get some tear and tape. No, this isn't tear and tape. This is seal plus on those four bits. Okay, and then my long strip of designer series paper. Um, there is no back or front, but I'm just going to start it sort of about in the middle. Oh, hello, Sorrel. Oh, oh, kitty assistant. Oh, blooming heck! <laughs> and I can't put I can't put this down either. Okay, so I've just gently bent it round so that it fits. So I'm going to put some little dabs along the, oh she's tail in the face, just along the way. Oh she's headbutting me, that's lovely, thank you Sorrel. That's it, go off to a different desk, just so it kind of holds it in place a bit. Bend it round again. And there we go. So I don't, and I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't put glue along the top, and that is because I want to tuck this in under the ribbon. It's not a ribbon at all. <laughs> I want to tuck this under the paper, and I'm just giving it a little bit of a bend. And I kind of want it out of sight, but not completely out of sight. So, I've, as you can see, I've slid it between the cardstock and the paper. I'm eyeballing where the centre is, which is about there. I get my paper piercer, do my best not to puncture my finger. Because doing that on camera would not be pretty. Nobody wants to see that. There we go, that's through. <clears throat> and I can get one of <laughs> one of my brads that's still in the bag from Monday's project. Because <laughs> I haven't taken a photo of it yet. And I'm going to take the square ones. I found that the little round ones were just a little bit too little. Pop that in. And open those up and then do the same so you can see probably a little bit better at this cat hair now oh sorrel you can see that it's going between the card and the paper and again through with the paper piercer can 
get another white one. And that means that that can still hinge. And you can actually get the box in and out without having to move the handle. But if you wanted to, you could. So, how cute are they? I'm going to put that back there so that I remember to keep them in the photos. They're so cute. Actually, I need to push that down a bit more. That's better. But they're really cute, aren't they? I like them very much. And like I say, it was 2014 when I, the one and only time I've made them. So it's been nice to revisit. I like to revisit a project now and again. Anyway, thank you ever so much for joining me. Hope to speak to you very soon. Bye.